Thank you. What a big hand for John putting this craziness together. Come on. Good Lord. First of all, big points to you guys. Nobody was actually reading this. Great, great. So a couple disclaimers before we get started here. Right now I'm rocking this monster cold thing. So I am rocking NyQuil. So if I tip over, you honey, I just want you to kind of shake, tickle me. You tickle me, I'm there, I'm, we're going. Second disclaimer, fast paced little go in here. This is usually about an hour and a half talk. We're going to compress it down. So take notes. If you want a copy of this presentation afterwards, just reach out to me and, and I'll get it to you. Uh, and third, you guys have paid you know, good money to be here in time, yet you're paying to see somebody who dressed up once like that. <laughs> and and, and th there's a reason for it. Let me kind of try to explain. This happened in 2005, right after I learned about this really cool thing that we might talk about today. So if you look at my Halloween costume for 2005, that there's a pod. Oh, he's got a broken wing. That might be a cast. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Ho, 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 ho. That cat drifts up like a podcast at Halloween. How cool is that? <laughs> That's awesome. You know how many people knew what a podcast was back in 2005? <laughs> Nobody. That, that costume bombed. Okay, so, so, so let's get star, started. And, and the story starts here, June 28, 2005. That's when Apple Computer announced that iTunes 4.7 would support podcasting. Oh, that's, that's pretty cool. And the minute that happened, boink, 52 million iPod owners, and now 120 gazillion iPad pod owners have immediate and instant access to podcasting. Now, I'm thinking to myself back then, that's pretty cool. That seems like a lot of people who we could reach out to and, and, and do stuff and, and do this podcasting thing. But the first thing that occurred to me was a uh, uh, podcast. What's a podcast? So I did a lot of research and went to blogs and stuff and lots of really detailed explanations. But this, this explanation worked in a pool full of drunk people at St. Lucia. So I think it might work. And basically what a podcast is, is an internet radio show that you can subscribe to. So that when a new episode presents itself, it just shows up. Easy peasy, one, two, three easy. So I was pretty excited about that because it occurred to me that if people subscribe to my podcast, that means 100% of those people want to hear my story, which is unbelievable. It'd be like a radio station saying, Mr. Advertiser, 100% of our listeners want to hear your ad, which is impossible in radio. It's only possible in podcasting. So I got pretty jazzed about that. And because I'm a good husband, I wanted to tell my wife. Now, I've been married for 16 years, uh, not in a row. There was a gap there. Uh, and so I, I told Wife 2.0 about podcasting. And, uh, and, and because she's Wife 2.0, very, very supportive gal, and she said, uh, podcasting, who the hell is going to want to listen to that? Supportive. I like that. It, st strengthening the marriage. And so I thought, well, I should, I should answer that question. And what it came down to was, I got to figure out what the criteria for success is for a podcast. It doesn't make sense to go out and do one of these if you don't know what a good one looks like. So it turns out there's two groups of people we care about in the podcast world. And the first is the listener or the viewer, if it's a video podcast. And the second group is the organization from whom the podcast is from. Makes sense, right? So for the listener, I've got to do one of two things. I've got to either entertain them or educate them, or both. And for the organization, I have to do one of two things. I have to either make them money or motivate people to take action on their behalf. As long as I do one from this side and one from this side, we're going to have us a successful podcast. The reason why most podcasts fail 
is because they forget this side. How many people here are entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, you're all doing your own thing? How many people here are working for companies that are bigger than just yourself? Okay. So for companies that work for folks that are bigger than yourselves, the reason why most podcasts fail is because marketing gets a hold of it. And marketing says, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> marketing guy's going, um, Whitney. <laughs> marketing says, oh no, here's what we'll do. We'll, we'll talk about our FAQs and, and we'll do our press releases and product announcements and nobody gives a damn. And that's why they fail. In 2006, there were so many corporate podcasts, they were everywhere. How many corporate podcasts are out there now? Fewer. Why? They forgot this part. They simply forgot. So knowing this, I decided I wanted to test the waters a bit here and go out and try to test whether this made sense. So I started working with a company called the Great Relaxation Music Company that makes music, by the way, that is great. <laughs> Come on, that's really <laughs> So August 1st, 2005, we did the podcast called The Great Relaxation Music Podcast. It was me and my NPR voice. Welcome to The Great Relaxation Music Podcast. I'm not kidding you. And so we played a couple relaxation tunes. We talked about the artists and just decided to see what would go on. Next thing you know, people started coming to the website and people started buying stuff. And when we asked them how did they hear, they said podcast. They love the show. And what ended up happening is we saw a lift in sales on that site of 23%, directly related to the podcast. We're still seeing deals today because of podcasts that we did in 2005. So clearly we can make money doing podcasting. Now at that same time, I moved to Las Vegas, which is very much like moving to the Wild West. <laughs> it was nuts here. <laughs> So, uh, for instance, uh, I found the pool builder who, besides building a great pool, included, at no extra charge, a 200-gallon-a-day leak underneath my deck, which is not a feature. <laughs> I found, I found the, the, the landscaper who thought that $1,800 deposit w was a gift. He didn't have to do anything for it. So we thought it'd be a good idea to do a show that kind of warned people, taught people about what's going on here in Las Vegas. So on January 12, 2006, we launched the Living in Las Vegas podcast. That was the first site. That's the site that's up and running today. Huge feedback, worldwide feedback, but the, one of the coolest things was the very first email we received. It was from Scott. And he said, hey, we used your advice and talked to Jennifer. We're meeting next week to look at a house. We talked about Jennifer in this podcast, said she was our realtor. She helped us find a house. We talked about her one time in the first episode of an unproven podcast, and she got two deals because of it. Clearly, we could motivate people. You can do that. So I met my criteria. Based upon that, I thought, I think this podcasting stuff has legs. So on August 1st, 2006, I launched PodWorks. PodWorks is an internet broadcasting company. We specialize in podcasts, web TV, and live streaming video productions. Speaking of live streaming video productions, October 2nd this year, we launched the Vegas Video Network, which is a live streaming broadcasting network that specializes in insider news and expert views about podcasting. I, about Las Vegas. I believe that this stuff will kill it for you if you do it. So that's my story. Let's talk about your story now. What do we have to do to create a great podcast for y'all? First, we have to talk about how to position this content. How should you position a podcast? When I ask people why they do podcasts, I hear a lot of the bright, shiny reasons why they think about it. But here's the tip. You bond with people on their problems, not your solution. Nobody cares what you do. They only care what you do for them. So if you're pitching to somebody else, I want you to pay for my podcast, you have to know where they're thinking. So when we talk to people about podcasting, we're usually talking to people who create the story for that company. So chief marketing officers or VP of sales, depending on the size, or maybe a CEO. And they tell me there are three issues that keep coming up over and over again that if you can solve it, podcasting makes sense. If you can't, we don't care. The first problem is, how do I extend the reach of my brand 
beyond any direct customer contact. In other words, when I work with you, I know what you do. <laughs> but when we're done working together, it's your job to make sure you're emotionally connected to me. So I use you again. So I refer other people to you. And so I push back on competitive advancements. That makes sense, right? You can do that with podcasting if you do it right. The second is, how do we break through this clutter of the 300 to 4,000 marketing messages that we all get a day? Now, the experts will vary pretty widely on that number. They don't vary on how it happens to us. We get it at home, online, the logoing of America, welcome <laughs> to Las Vegas, event marketing, regular media, and then just day-to-day -day stuff. Half the restrooms you go in here in Las Vegas, if you're standing in front of a urinal, there's a good chance, visual, there's a good chance that, that there's an LCD monitor in front of you saying, hey, try our hot wings. You can't get away from it, right? So the third issue is approachability. Now, most people think approachability is a big company problem, and it is. But it's actually a problem for anybody who has a website. Because think about it. Before you had a website, if I wanted to do business with you, what would I do? I'd pick up the phone. I'd talk to you. I'd talk to somebody who's been taught to tell me the story, and I'd find out quickly who you are, what you do, and the problems you solve. Today, I never have to talk to a human to decide whether or not you make my short list, right? I go to your website, which is actually a brick wall between me and you. And I look at the flyers that you put all over your brick wall, all your text and pictures, and then I compare your flyers and your brick wall to the other flyers and brick wall, and I decide which one am I going to pick. And the truth is, your text is about the same as everybody else's text. About. That's not a feature either. So these are the issues that we're trying to deal with here. So other reasons why people do podcasting, again, if you're trying to have other people think about this, you want to focus on the problem first. If, by the way, you want to sell podcasting services, that's how we were successful. We don't talk about what a podcast does first. We talk about the problems we will solve. Does that make sense? Hey Scott, do you differentiate between audio or uh, video podcasting? No, do both? not at all. Do them both. Good question. No more for you, though. <laughs> okay. So, so, so how do we do this? We address this through a methodology that's repeatable and trackable. And that methodology is called the four P's of podcasting, which is to plan, produce, publish, and promote. So we're going to drill down to each one of these, okay? Let's start with planning. Here's the deal with planning. They're all important, but if you drop the, the, the ball here, you're toast. All the other stuff doesn't happen. Planning a new podcast is like planning a TV talk show or a radio talk show. And so because of that, it intimidates some people. And it often leads to what's called pod fading. Have you heard of that before? So pod fading is a podcast that gets started in earnest, but then stops early because of lack of time, resources, or planning. So if this is a hobby podcast, it doesn't matter. But if this is a business podcast, it's huge. Remember that subscription nature to podcasting? Well, if I subscribe to your podcast, I've raised my hand and I said, I believe you can help me. You can make my life better, either personal or business, right? That's a huge vote of confidence. But if you pod fade, if you end before you say you're going to end, you've told me my vote doesn't count. How is that going to affect your brand? Poorly. Right? Again, not a feature. So what we use for our clients is a tool called an episode map. An editorial calendar is often how it's referred to as well. So we're going to drill down to this in gory detail. Okay? Start from the top. The title of your show, that is the last thing you'll fill in here. The reason is you're going to use all this other content to help drive it. Here, what are the keywords that people associate with you? you? When people Google you, without using your name, how do they get to you? So for example, the podcast that our company did was called Podcasting for Business. Because at the time, people were doing business podcasts, podcasting for business. It happened all the time, so we wanted to reflect us. It wasn't called the Podworks podcast because nobody knew what a Podworks was, right? This is the Polycom. You guys know Polycom, triangle-shaped phone you see in every conference room? 
So this is their episode map. So they call themselves Polycom On Demand because they're an on-demand conferencing thing, and it's in their world, that's a pretty common term. So Polycom On Demand made sense for them. How often should you do a show? Frank Sinatra had a great line. He said, I had my whole life, baby, to do my first album, but I only had six months to do my second album. You have your whole life to do your first episode in your podcast, but how long do you have to do your second episode? Well, it's less than six months for sure, and it's measured in weeks usually. But let's talk about that. So what most people, when they reach out to us and say, hey, we're ready to do a podcast, we want to do one weekly, I almost always say, don't. Because a weekly show is a grind if it's not your full-time gig. And what you want to do is under-promise, over-deliver to your customers, right? So I would say do it every couple weeks, maybe every three to get started. And then if you just feel the urge to do an extra podcast, go ahead and what you've done is created a bonus show. Huh. You've under-promise, over-delivered. People love that. Okay? Next, let's talk about this. This is a style area here. This is the vibe of your show. And the first is music. Music sets the mood for your show. It is uber important, which is why TV stations and radio stations spend thousands of dollars for music. When we first started doing podcasting, I was spending no less than $400 per show to do music licensing, which is a lot. I don't do that anymore. I recommend these guys in a big way. M-U-S-Y-N-C, music. You hear their music on TV all the time. We have heard our music from shows on commercials. It's that good. And it's reasonably priced. You can get music here for about 50 bucks. You can actually get 10 seconds of music, music for $5. And if you think about it, all you're really doing is a small intro and an out, maybe a bumper, which is a little music boop in the middle, and that's it. These guys are great. Plus, if you ask them nicely, they'll send you a DVD with all their music on it. So you can just roll through their DVDs and, and search for it that way. It's very nice, great music. Um, they do a good job. And they keep bringing out new music as well. Next, the audience. We go here next before we do this. Why? Because we have to know who, who we're creating this content for. Right? You can't be all things to all people, but you do have to know who you're reaching out to. So who are the people that you want to reach out to? And the reason why you want to do this is because when we get to this piece, if we create an episode that doesn't address any of these folks, there's a mistake. Either our list here is wrong, or that episode wasn't, wasn't a, a play. So you do your, your audience first, know who your audience is, and then create your episode list. Now look, when this thing is blank, it's intimidating. So I don't expect you to just go, okay, our first episode is this, and our second, and so on and so forth. That's not gonna play out. So if you're in a company with multiple people, who are your stars? What are the stories? What I really like is behind the curtain stuff. People wanna know how stuff works. That's huge. Here are some other ideas for what plays out for good podcast episodes. There are a ton, like I said, I'm really digging this. What if your company is a thought leader but they're not perceived as a thought leader? It's a good way to use podcasting. Employee interviews are always good if you're a, a multi-employee thing. Now, if you're your own company, one man thing, a solopreneur or whatever, well then you might be your own thing or you might be interviewing other people as well. That makes sense? Okay, next. SLE is subject, subject level expert. Who are you going to reach out to uh, to interview on your show? Now, if, you, if you're doing your own podcast and it's just a, a solo, basically a, a monologue, that's okay, but it's fun to bring in other people. It's helpful. It creates multiple voices, which is you know, interesting to listen to. But you want to know who you're going to line up ahead of time so that you can reach out to them because people are busy, right? And you want to get on their calendar as soon as you can because we're gonna reach out to these people twice for every show, okay? All right, any questions about that real quick? Okay, let's go to the production stage. Okay, here's the deal about, yeah, I'm sorry. Is that a program that you have or? It's what we created. And that build up? If you're very nice. He asked if that was available and I said no. No, I <laughs> if, if he's very nice. What do you mean? Uh, I'll show you. 
Okay, produce. What's going on here? Sonic problems or video problems with your podcast will kill your credibility. Kill it. Content problems will kill your credibility. Right? Our job is to make smart people sound smart. That's it. If you drop the ball on either one of those, you're, you're going to lose your audience in a New York second. So we have to talk about technology a bit and then content. We'll talk a little bit of technology first. Now, hardware, the truth is I can do an hour and a half on hardware. So we're not going <laughs> to. Instead, if you want to buy hardware and you want to go to a place that does a great job, great job and who has been embracing podcasting since I can remember, buy your stuff from these guys. BSW USA. They are negotiable, their prices are great, they've been in it for a long time, I highly recommend them. Okay? So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on hardware, but I will spend some time on software. Software is important. You want to be able to do certain things with your software. They are down here. I want it to be multi-track capable. Here's Scott, here's the guest, here's the music, for example. I want to be able to multi-record. I'm recording Scott and Fred at the same time. Okay? I want to be able to edit my, my envelope and my, my tracks. Do you see, can you see that little line right there? What I've done here is I've taken that track and I've gone from full volume to zero volume smoothly. So it goes like this and it gets quiet. As opposed to, I, it doesn't stop abruptly. So what software, this happens to be Adobe Audition, which is what I recommend to people who don't want to spend, you know, eight, nine hundred dollars for software. So this software is, I think, about 300 bucks. There's other software out there that's free. I forget the one, that, Audacity, I think it's called. I've not used it. Um, this is who I recommend to my corporate customers who don't want to spend lots and lots of money. The ability here is huge. I want to play for you two clips. I'm not sure how well this is going to sound, but we'll give it a shot. I'm going to play two clips. One of an interview I did pre-edit, and that same interview post-edit. Okay? Let's see if this plays out. And I'm going to count the number of starts and stops and uhs and errs just so you can get an idea of what we're dealing with here. Tell me if you can hear. But be quiet. Typical customer base. Our typical customer base is uh, ranges from about um, 40 years plus, um, and it's pretty even, uh, male and female. But the, the key characteristics is that they 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 tend to be more affluent, um, and 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 they're definitely more paranoid and concerned about. Um, <laughs> So what, 14, 15, uhs, errs, non-words, false starts? You can't listen to that show. Can't do it. But the problem is that guy was really smart and really had some neat stuff to say. Here's that exact same clip after we edit it. And you can actually see all the edits in that clip right there. All those lines are the edits. Same clip. Maybe. Here we go. Typical customer base. Our typical customer base ranges from about 40 years plus and it's pretty even, male and female, but the key characteristics is that they tend to be more affluent and they're definitely more paranoid and concerned about um, credit fraud. Feel the difference? It's huge. So what happens there when you do that, first of all, you make a better product for your listener, but the other thing is people can't wait to be on your show. <laughs> they can't wait, right? No kidding, I've got people who have linked to their podcast episode on their LinkedIn page because they sound like geniuses, <laughs> right? And that's my job is to make smart people sound smart. So that's, that's a good play for you, okay? And that software is the only way you do that. Okay, show format. What are the things that you should say in the beginning of your show? Your mileage may, be, may vary, but here's an example of what we do for one show. I'm going to give you two different examples. Here's the first one. And we'll kind of follow along while we're going here. You're listening to Intersections, brought to you by Inner Woman. Music gets louder. <coughs> In today's episode, we're going to learn how Trusted ID worked with Inner Woman to significantly improve their website's sales performance. I'm your host, Scott Whitney. Welcome to the podcast. 
music gets louder, gets quieter. Intersections by Interwoven has been produced to help you unlock the value of your business content. Our aim is to ensure you get the most out of your online interactions and collaborations and fuel the business growth that will distance yourself from your competition. Our website is interwovenpodcast.com and our email address is podcast at interwoven.com. There's your bumper. For our very first customer spotlight episode, Trusted ID. I want to make it easy for people to reach out to me. The truth is people do not listen to your entire podcast all the time. Sorry. <laughs> so let, it, let people know how to reach out to you as soon as you possibly can. So in the event they don't listen to your whole episode, they do know how to do so. Now, is that too long? I don't know. For some people, it might be. It worked out here. There was no wasted space. We didn't have a lot. You'll hear a lot of podcasts that just play music because they can. With no content behind it, that's a miss. You, you want to have something going on while you're doing it. Here's a, a different show. This is called, uh, this is an internal podcast, what we call an intracast. We did for Podwork, or for uh, Polycom. Much quicker go here. You're listening to the Polycom Services Division, intracast. Volume music. This show has been produced to inform and educate the Polycom workforce on how the services division operates and strives to keep the customer first. I'm your host, Scott Whitney, and for today's episode, we feature my interview with Chris Taylor, director of APAC Services based out of Hong Kong. Chris began our talk by explaining what his role was within the services division. My role within the uh, service division. Quick. In, out, let's go. Right? Didn't have to worry so much about people contacting because this was an internal show for uh, employees as well. So they already kind of knew how to reach out to them. Okay? <clears throat> Next, we pre interview all of our guests. And the reason is most people don't quite know how to tell the story, which is surprising, but it's true. The way most people tell their story goes like this they say, here's the solution we have. So we're the number one provider of widgets and whatever's that you've ever seen before. We're a pretty groovy company with yada yada blah blah woof woof. Then they say, and the problem we try to solve is a little bit of this or a little bit of that, yada yada yada. And then sometimes, though not always, they'll speak of what we call the alternative solution, which is the competitors, basically. But this weakens your value proposition. As a matter of fact, if you are a spocky kind of guy, it's highly illogical because that's not how people think. Right, nobody thinks this way. Um, what do you do for a living? I am a VA that specializes in social media marketing. You are a what? A virtual assistant. Virtual assistant. Okay. Here's how I think. What's your name? Eleanor. Eleanor? <laughs> oh my God. I have been working my butt off trying to run my own little business and I'm trying to do all these different things and, and I'm really having a hard time, Eleanor. Problem. And so you know what I've done? Well, I've gone out to, to Elance and, and I've, I, those, those people aren't even in the country. <laughs> and, and, I've, and I've talked to my buddy, my buddy Dave, and Dave, Dave's drunk all the time. He can't help me. So Eleanor, I'm coming to you. Please, Eleanor, please help me. <laughs> They don't talk SPA, they talk P-A-S. You bond with people on their problems, again, not your solution. I said this before, nobody cares what you do. They only care what you do for them. And to the extent you can articulate the problem, you don't sound like a salesperson anymore. You sound like a cat who knows stuff, right? Claiming your own credibility is the weakest way to establish it. It's what I call the drunk guy at the party syndrome. Right? You're at a party, guy goes, you, <laughs> man, I am so cool. And, uh, and our company does all these things, and I'm working with Fred and Dave and Jack. You want my card? Right, well, guess what most websites do? Guess what most salespeople do? They tell me how smart they are and all the great things they do and all the people they work for and how much money they're making. Everybody acts like the drunk guy at the party. And they can't figure out why they can't sell anything. It's because they're not bonding on the problem first. So you speak to the problem first. That's how we want to talk. And then we go to the alternative solution. This step we call subtly 
poisoning the competition. I'm taking them out. Now, some people say, ah, oh, no, Scott, Scott, <laughs> we don't do that. We don't take out the competition, we're above that, which is fine, you don't have to do this, but here's the scoop. Your competitors are probably talking about you, and even if they're not, I guarantee you, your, your prospects are researching them. I hear this sometimes too, ah, we don't have any competition. <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> if you're a life coach, you do. There's about a thousand of them every five minutes logging on to frickin' Twitter. But here, here's the alternative solution. Everybody... <laughs> Everybody in this room has one alternative solution, everybody, and that is the status quo. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to stick with what I've already got. So if nothing else, you must poison the status quo, otherwise people will not pull the trigger. That makes sense? And then you wrap up with the solution. The final thing I want in their head is my story or your interviewee story if you're going to be interviewing somebody else. You want them to be remembering this stuff here, right? So when we do a pre-interview with somebody, we go through that process with every single person. We teach them briefly that PAS concept here. And then we go into the pre-interview. We start with, hey, just tell me your background to kind of get started. What you all about? Eh, good. Now, boom. In reference to the show topic, what problem does your company face? Here's the truth of the matter. It's happened to me a couple times since I've been doing this business where people didn't know the problem. They couldn't figure it out. They invent because they can. If that's the case, we just stop. I say, hey, you know, why don't we just take a break here? Why don't you go back and kind of think about what problems are you trying to solve here? Because if you don't know, I can't help you. So if you're going to do your own podcast for your own company, you should be able to come up with about 10 problems. Just, which is, which is homework. I mean, you have to do that. You have to know. But think about the problems you solve. Then we go to what types of customers will be dealing with this problem. I don't know if you noticed, but that PAS, that's exactly how a movie works, right? The problem, gong, 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 all kinds of bad things are happening to me, oh my god, I have a problem. Alternative solution, I'm trying to help you, then I get my butt kicked. And then the solution comes in and, and the good guys come, right? That's how movies work. Well, that's how this works. But I have to have a protagonist in my movie. So that question is a protagonist. Who does this apply to? Who are the people that are affected by this particular topic? Because not every show is for every listener. So I want to know. Next. What are these people doing today that's not working? Do you remember what that is? That's the alternative solution, right? What are folks doing today that's not working? Which includes st sticking with the status quo. Then, finally, what does your product do to solve the problem? P-A-S. We, we will also ask, usually, what else should we know? Because they may have something they're just dying to tell us, which is cool but we, we ask them to resist the temptation to do talking points or buzzwords because it happens all the time. And if you talk buzzwords, people just don't listen. Okay? So once we do that pre-interview with somebody, then we do an interview with them. I actually write out the questions that I'm going to ask them and I outline where I think the answers are going to go. Because sometimes people get a little nervous when they're being interviewed. It happens. So we provide them this document, and at the beginning, we remind them of a few things here. It's important. First, this is not live. If you zig when you think you should zag, it's <laughs> no sweat. We'll just ask the question again. We'll fix it in post. Second, stay close to the mic. I don't want you in and out, or if it's a phone call. A lot of ours are phone calls or Skype calls. Stay close to whatever you're doing. Here, have fun. This is an ego stroke. We're, we're talking to you because you're an expert in the field. And by the way, if you say something that's even remotely funny, I'm the easiest laugh you'll ever meet. <laughs> and, and I am. And there's a reason for that. Because laughter humanizes people. The goal of your podcast should be to human enable your website. I want to put a hole in that brick wall. Laughter puts a hole in it. 
When you're laughing, you're having a good time. Ah, this guy's not pitching. This guy's just kind of rocking, man. I like him. Laugh. Laugh it up. We tell them who the audience is. If it's a phone interview, you know how when you talk to somebody, you go, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, uh-huh, because you're acknowledging that you're listening. Yeah, 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 uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't do that in a podcast, especially if you're in studio and somebody's on the phone because you'll step all over their sound. So I tell them, when you're talking, I'm going to be quiet, which is a little disturbing if you're not warned of that. So if I'm quiet, that means you're killing it, brother. Go. If I interrupt you, it's because I think we should probably do it again, or I've got another question. All right? And then don't read the bullet points directly. And what do I mean by that? Here is what this document looks like when we send. Here's the question I ask, and here's the outline of where I think you're going to go. Whoops. Oop, oop, there we go. So if I hear somebody say, <laughs> well, we increase amounts of rich media like images, PPT. If they say PPT, they're reading this. <laughs> right? And I'll stop it. So wait a minute. Do you mean PowerPoint? Oh, yeah. Can we do it again? Sure. Yeah, we just want to use this as, as road signs to where their story is going to go. All right? All right. Next, publish. Here's the deal here. Our job is to increase the probability of engagement with that viewer or listener while at the same time decreasing the risk of incompatibility. In other words, Although we don't know who's listening to our show, it's our job to make it easy for them to do so. Okay? So what does that mean? Let's talk about how many different ways that you can listen to a podcast, for example. So we'll use an MP3 file. How many are doing podcasts right now, by the way? Anybody? I know that you are. A couple more? Okay. MP3 files. How many different ways are there to listen to an MP3-based podcast? I want you guys to take a second and write down in your head or on a piece of paper how many ways can you listen to a podcast. Ready? Go. Dong ding dong 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 ding dong 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 ding da do dun do dun do do more than one do 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 okay how many came up with one well done, everybody. Three. Four. Nice. Five. Six. Atta boy. I got six. Let's go. Boom. First one, MP3 file. Obvious, right? A link. You'd be shocked at how many people decide not even to do that. Eh. So, and by the way, when you look at an MP3 file, there's these things called ID3 tags. Skipping this step is just a huge miss. This is your marketing opportunity. You put text in these MP3 files. Now talk about what's the title of the show, what's the name of the program, you know, how do I reach out to me, who's it been done by, yada, yada, yada. Put that stuff in there. It shows up in players. It shows up in something else I'll show you in a second. It's just great marketing stuff. You don't want to skip that. Second, M3U, that's a streaming MP3 file. You know how when you click on an MP3 file, it loads the MP3 file into the browser, and all you're looking then is an MP3 file? Well, this streaming little guy loads it in your player and keeps your website right there, and immediately starts playing. It starts streaming the MP3 file. Very, very cool. Next, Flash Player. This is what most people miss, and this is the single biggest mistake in podcasting. If you do not put a flash player for each individual episode, you are completely dropping the ball here. And here's why. Remember when I clicked on your MP3 file, what happened? I went to that browser, and now I'm just looking at an MP3 player, right? I've lost all your branding. I've, and, and the other thing is, I know that's going to happen. So I'm less inclined to do that, because it's just a pain. When you add a flash player, you allow people to audition your content you're giving yourself a crack at it. You're making it easy for people to go. Really? Holy crap. Okay. <laughs> 10 minutes. Okay. RSS Reader, right? Google Reader. Google Reader can play podcast. Very cool. Directory, <laughs> 10 minutes. Uh, podcast, Alley, those kind of things. And of course, the 800 pound gorilla, iTunes. If you're not on iTunes, uh, uh, go there. <laughs> there you go. 
Next, platform. My platform of choice, of course, is Blogger. And, oh, is WordPress. <laughs> and, and WordPress crushes this. It is the best. You know, we used to do website design. We used to spend or charge a thousand, you know, tens of thousands of dollars for website design. We still do that now for people who need this. We don't have to spend that kind of money anymore because WordPress makes it easy. And I'm an eat your own dog food kind of guy. So the new Vegas Video Network site is actually a rockin' WordPress website. The Living in Las Vegas podcast, it's a rockin' WordPress site. My corporate website, the Podwork site, is a rockin' website made by WordPress. So it works. It works well. By the way, you know, I'm sure all you guys kind of know this, kind of preaching to the choir, but what I love about this is when you write content here, it shows up in the RSS feed, so you don't duplicate content. You write it once, it's there. This is kind of not new news to this room, but it's a big deal. It used to be you had to do double content. It was just a huge drag. And we all know the search engine optimization. I ran this search yesterday. You know, number one, you know, just, there it is. So Google just loves WordPress. I'm a big fan. So here's the plugin I use. I think you talked about PodPress. So if you type in podcast in the install plugin, you'll see a whole bunch of them. PodPress was kind of the 800 pound gorilla for a while. I stopped using them because they stopped supporting it. It's just no longer a play. You talked about the video problems with it. It's always had those problems and I just don't use it anymore. So I recommend these guys, Blueberry, which is a spelling thing, but these guys are providing a free, unbelievable free uh, plugin that kills podcasting, kills it. So here's how you how you make this happen. You guys got that down? All right. So once you install it, once you light it all up, you basically, if you want to, you can go into the the settings and just say simple, and, and in essence, you're done. Now, this is the configuration for the Vegas Video Network. We're doing a lot of pretty heavy duty stuff here. But what's cool about it is I can do a lot of pretty heavy duty stuff here. Again, I could spend hours on just this, but your, your capabilities here are monstrous or just real simple. When you do it, I'm going to fill in my title for my, my episode. Here's my description and it creates this little guy right here. Podcast episode. So your media URL the URL to your MP3 or your MP4 or, or whatever it you're doing, you just stick it right there. And then file size, you specify how big it is. Or actually, I do automatic, I'm sorry. And then duration, I put the duration in there. And the duration is important, by the way. You should always put that in there because it shows up elsewhere and it also shows up in iTunes. So just take the time and put that in there. When you do that, it looks like this. Okay? Simple, easy peasy, one, two, three easy, man player, you can open a new window, you can download the content, gives you the size. It doesn't get any easier than that. And it's a nice looking player as well. Next, what I love about this software though is you can have multiple podcast tracks in one website, like the Vegas Video Network. So we have six different shows. Each of them are treated as a, a completely standalone podcast using one plugin. It's stunning that you can do this. So here's a, kind of a list of what we've got right now, and then I can drill down and literally put anything I want for all these dudes. So like, for instance, you know how a, a podcast has a little a graphic, right? Well, usually it used to be you get one graphic for the website and that's it. Nope. I've got a graphic for every for different show. I've got a description for every different show. They're completely separate. It is amazing. And it's easy and, and it's free. It actually allows us to do this. This is on the sidebar of our, of our Vegas Video Network. This is just auto magic, man. Auto magic. Hard to beat. Hard to beat. Okay, promote. I got time, crazy kid. Come on. So uh, everybody here is on Twitter, I'm assuming, right? So, so do it. Facebook, do it. I don't need to tell you about that. You guys kind of already know that. There's other people who could tell you more about that than me. But I will tell you about a couple of things that are important. When you first install WordPress, this is set in this manner. It says I want my site to be visible to everybody. The reason why it wouldn't be set like that, for example, it wasn't set like that for us because we hid everything when we were, when we were developing this, the website. I didn't want Google to find me. So we turned it off. 
used to be you actually had to go in there and write the code that says go to this little ping site and this ping site. We had like 50 ping sites. It was nonsense. Just do that. Just make sure it's there, though, because Google wants to know about your content, okay? Second, when you do a podcast, make it easy for people to find it. All right, so this is the Polycom website, and they put their podcast on the home page above the fold. That's exactly where I'd want that. They just, just redesigned it. They had a new team come in, and they took it off, and we have seen a drop in downloads. Of course. Of course. Plus, you want to place your podcast episodes in areas of your website that are related. So don't just keep it on that one page for your podcast. If you do an episode about a particular product or service that you do, you're providing a man behind the curtain look, well, let people know that. Like we talked about wireless office stuff. Well, here's a wireless product. Boom. So here's the marketing stuff. Here's the guy that actually designed the product. How cool is that? And I've increased my, my exposure to that podcast, right? What else? Employees. So let's say you, you're in a company of, oh, I don't know, 20 folks, and you do 10 emails a day. Well, guess what? If you use email as a tool to tell, tell people about your podcast, I've just created 200 ads in a day, but I work five days a week. So now I've got 1,000 little ads. But I don't work one week. I work 50 weeks a year. So instead of not telling anybody what I'm doing, I've got booyah, 50,000 little ads running around telling people that I do podcasts. So on your signature, it should say, listen to my podcast. You know, hit me on Twitter, rock the blog. Let people know, right? Just makes sense. Also, stumble upon is a pretty effective tool if you use it sparingly. If you ping stumble upon too much, it stops being effective. They stop using you. But we did a test in the most difficult environment ever. We did a podcast for, for Polycom right before Christmas break. Nobody's going to listen to podcasts then. I sent it to stumble upon, and in 30 days, we had 700 downloads. Those people never knew, knew who we were, and boop, we got that kind of response. It was pretty cool. Okay, I got plenty of time. Let's have a contest. Wanna? Okay. On my website, we have the Podcasting for Business podcast. It's a premier podcast. You have to pay to download much of the content. But what I'm going to do is give away the code that you use right here. If somebody can guess something, and I'll let you guys kind of be a team on this, OK? Here we go. I want you to look carefully at this picture again. Study it. Know it. I'm going to ask you a question about what's up there. You guys got it? How many pea pods were on me? Seven. Who said on your head? You get nothing. And with this laser, I will take out your retinas. I've actually got seven minutes to burn your retina out, honey. All right. OK, so the collective answer is six. Are you guys sure with that? OK. I'm sorry, it's six. Congratulations. You are correct. Everybody in this room will not be given that password. You ready to write this down? It is in lowercase P O D as in dog, exclamation point, W O R X. That'll work for a week. So go there, download, download, download. Keep it to yourself. So download. I'm hoping that the audio didn't work here. <laughs> and that's it. That's all I got. Here's my contact information here. I am on Twitter. You're a kind and lovely audience. If you need to reach out to me and, and hey, check out the Vegas Video Network. It's some pretty cool stuff. Yes, Seth? Blue Burry. I had plenty of time, John. Awesome. You're killing me, brother. <laughs> Give me about 10 minutes. I'm like, oh my God. Blue Burry. Blue Burry. Okay. B L U B R R R or B R R Y. Yeah, it rocks. Any other questions? Yes. What is the site for the code? For the who? Podworks.com. This one right here. Right here. 
And you'll see, uh, you'll see a, a top that says podcast right there. Yes? How would that, um, plug in? Oh. Video. No, no, no. Uh, well, that, but, okay, so I'm using PodPress. Yes. And if I want to switch to this, how would that be? Would it be a mess? Yeah, you have to drink. You d like drink? Gin? Rum? What are you, a rum drinker? No? no Nothing? Drink. Okay, well, then I'll drink for you because it's hard. <laughs> no, it's not. It actually has a deal that says, I think it has a deal where you can just switch right over. Yeah, because remember, all you're really doing is pointing to external MP4 or MP3s or whatever, okay. right? How many, do you, how many episodes do you have? 32. Yeah, so it'll take some time. <laughs> you're just going to have to say, yeah, it's going to take a little time. But I mean, I, I can just do it and let it, let it run Yeah, itself. I think it has a conversion thing. Don't hold me to that. Actually, I think it does because I converted from PodPress to these guys on my website. Okay. So I, I think it does. I think it does. No, well, uh, well, it may be. It depends on what you're, well, it shouldn't. You can tell it to use the same feed. So you just have to know what your feed is, and then when you go into the Blueberry, you say, I want to use that feed. You can force a feed on them. So you're, yeah, you're sweet there. By the way, um, all of these guys are not great with video management. So for the Vegas Video Network, which is basically a video podcast, it's, it's live, all of our shows are live, but then we make them video on demand as a, as a podcast as well. What we do is we, um, um, I don't use their player to show that because they're just crap. So I actually use Blip TV as my video player. I embed the video, you know, so people can download it and see it in like iTunes or whatever. But the actual player that I use is Blip TV for my videos. And it looks stunning. And you get to brand that too. So instead of it saying, you know how on YouTube it says YouTube or Vimeo it says Vimeo? It's nonsense. Well, Blip TV, you can put your own branding on it.